Hi, in this video I'm going to test out a set of paintbrushes as well as the new 36 watercolor set by Mia. The presentation and product quality is really nice, making them a great holiday gift option for beginner watercolorists. I'm actually quite excited about this review because it's the first time in over a year that I can say a paint set in the $20 range actually competes with Pretty Excellent. That set from the makers of Paul Rubens has pretty much been the undisputed winner of cheap beginner watercolors for me until now. This and Pretty Excellent both have flexible plastic ice cube style tray inserts instead of individual plastic pans. However, this Mia set has an unusual rhombus or diamond shaped pattern that is quite pretty. Each individual paint is slightly larger than the standard half pan size, so you actually get more paint in this set, and at this time it's even cheaper than Pretty Excellent. Unfortunately, the listing said that the paints came with a single brush and pencil, which I did not receive. I wanted to try their brushes though, so I bought their set of five brushes separately instead. The Mia brushes are synthetic, and the white bristles do get stained over time. For about $2 a brush though, they cost less than half of the price of my other brushes. I usually use Princeton Heritage because I like their point and snap for detail work. I grab my Princeton Neptune brushes when I want to do swatching or washes because they are super soft, ideal for large areas, and they hold a ton of water at once. Mia's smaller brushes are far easier to control than the larger ones in regards to evenly dispensing the paint on paper. I felt like the largest brush had a tendency to dump excess paint a little unevenly if the belly was very wet. I'll be using the two smallest brushes for all of my swatching and art in this video. The smallest one has shorter bristles, making it snap back to a fine point for tiny detail work. They are all a bit of a middle ground between soft and snappy. While they do have a pointed tip, you have to form it back to a point as you press the brush to paper. They are a less costly alternative to having multiple types of firm or soft brushes until you decide which type suits your work. More experienced artists may not like the middle of the road option after getting used to other brushes that lean towards one extreme. In general, I feel like the best brush is the one you're used to. Like other watercolor pan sets in this price range, you can compare them to professional paints as far as high pigment load and general performance, but the color selection tends to be made up of cheaper, mostly non-granulating pigments compared to more expensive brands. These sets include some standard light fast colors like thalo blue and green, as well as a variety of earth browns, but they also include fugitive colors, which likely account for about a third of the selection. I have found that fading usually happens the most in pink, purple, and orange colors in cheap sets like this, Pretty Excellent, Kurataki Gansai, Superior, Dugato, and similar brands that make sets aimed at beginners who want this premium paint performance on a budget. This means that sets like these are ideal for beginner practice, sketchbooks, and work to scan for prints where fading is not a concern, unlike art to sell or hang on a wall. This set does not include pigment ingredient codes or light fast ratings. I frequently notice complaints about these types of sets being overly vibrant or staining like markers. These colors can definitely be diluted for more subtle colors or mixed to create neutrals. In general, this type of pigment selection is standard for pan sets with this many colors. Easier to lift colors tend to be far less common than these cheap sets. Easily lifting and usually granulating colors like cobalt, viridian, and potter's pink are costly ingredients not found in bargain sets. If you're interested in lifting techniques such as in botanical art where you create a gentle shading effect by erasing colors with a damp brush, it is easier to do that on certain types of paper. The gelatin coating, called surface sizing, is often better on higher cost cotton papers, which will allow you to use these colors for a wider range of techniques. Both Mia and Pretty Excellent have a mostly transparent color selection that works really well for layering and glazing. The few opaque and heavier particle colors are ultramarine blue, burnt umber, red iron oxide, and the yellow ochre. 
While not as dramatic as Daniel Smith paints, these colors can be combined to create subtle color separating mixtures. Every color was capable of making smooth gradients and wet washes, and all of them had a beautiful salt reaction, confirming their finely ground pigment particles with no texture or binder issues. I was really happy with this set. The color mixtures were clean, there were no muddy or chalky results. I found it easy to arrive at neutral grays and easily mix alternatives to black using the blues and browns. There are seven types of brown colors in this set, which seems like a lot, but is super helpful for skin tones. While these colors all mix well together, you may find that you don't really need to mix a lot of colors since there are so many pre-made options. I think beginners who just want to practice will find that this set helps them just start painting instead of spending a lot of time on color mixing. There are a few options for reds, yellows, and blues, so there's plenty of opportunity to practice primary color mixing as well. After drawing with a waterproof ink pen, I felt like it looked a little harsh for the delicate portrait I intended to make. I love watercolors for their ability to add a soft feeling to the contrast of ink line work. These paints are definitely smooth and blend easily, allowing me to achieve my goal. The colors layer very well, and although each color is plenty intense in one layer, they can be built up over multiple layers for even deeper values if desired. Only a couple of the reddish browns have some notable wet to dry shift, getting a touch lighter as they dry, as these pigments tend to do in any brand. The overall selection seems like a great option for those who like to do a lot of layers, or maybe are too nervous to go dark on their first layer, but will have the option to build up richer colors in stages. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below.
If you'd like to see more, you can find all of my detailed swatch card images, results from my independent Lightfast testing, and other art supply reviews on my website. I'm currently building a huge pigment database where thousands of colors can be compared side by side with paint from other brands. Updates about this project, along with line art drawings and high res color scans, are also available on Patreon. Thanks for watching.